Uhu. Ha ha. Uhu. La 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 la. Hitty body boopy doo. I'm the magpie. And in this video, I am here with a box that just arrived. It's a very plain box, which I like because it's the inside that counts. Because in this video, I am making a review, which is something that I rarely do because I rarely choose to explore contemporary gear. <laughs> I'm more inclined to to look at the, the older stuff. Uh, but yeah, anyways, this is one of these but a new one. So this is the original Criterion Guitari Pocket Piano and inside of the box is the brand new Pocket Piano 201. Which I'm not sure, but do you think it might be a nod to like the Casio Tone 201? Maybe? The first Casio keyboard? <laughs> Hmm, I don't think they have anything more in common though than simply the numbers <laughs> on them. But yeah, fun anecdote. However, gotta start with saying, because I never get the chance to say it, this video is not sponsored. They're not paying me to say anything. In fact, I paid them to say all the things I'm going to say. To prove my point even more, I just want to market myself. I just released two new pedals that are going to be up in the web shop when this video is released. So if you want to support me, uh, please go and check out magpiepedals.com and you can get like number one, perhaps. Make it so that perhaps I can check out more contemporary gear in the future. <laughs> well, yeah, as many of you know, I'm like a huge Critter and Guitar fan. I have basically the complete collection, or at least I have had more or less everything that they have made. But the focus, of course, in comparison is gonna be primarily this, which is the original Pocket Piano, but also maybe the larger sibling, the Septa Box. I do not have the organelle, but I am pretty sure that the new Pocket Piano has a few things in common with it. Uh, maybe first and foremost that it's also kind of open source, so you can actually make things for it which is really cool. But yeah, I got it on their Kickstarter campaign. So that was last year. I don't know when they are going to start selling it. And I also sadly don't know what they're gonna, yeah, how they're going to price it. But based on the Kickstarter, I think we can expect somewhere from 200 to 300 bucks, approximately. If you are not familiar with Crystal and Guitar though, they are amazing at making these plug and play type instruments that I think a lot of people disregard as simply being toys or you know, with the wooden keys and it's definitely not for everybody but for me it's perfect because I can have a thing I can just turn it on and it's so limited in what you are able to do with it at least the, the original pocket piano and Septavox that you just have these two control buttons and then the keyboard and four knobs it's very intuitive you just start it up and you start doing stuff the two buttons then being that you switch tone and mode So perfect companion for me when I want to have synth sounds to be played through, for example, my pedals when demoing them in my demo videos, because with a pocket piano I can latch, so it's just playing an arpeggiator of itself and then I can focus on playing around with a pedal. So super straightforward and, and simple, but very clean in how it sounds with just the basic waveforms, which is nice. And I mean, the build quality is what it is and especially for the Septavox the build quality is actually pretty solid uh, also doubles as a shake but yeah same layout with just two control buttons a bigger keyboard and the four knobs so we're gonna see now how it compares with the new one <laughs> You got a nice paper flyer of sorts. Frame it, sell it. Very straightforward packaging, which I like. Ooh, secret box. Oh. Power supply, USB C. That is it. I should say USB A to USB C cable. This is it. So that's very very nice. I think that if we flip it, 
Yes, it's like a tradition with Criterion Guitar Gear that you don't need a manual because you have a somewhat of a manual on it. Same on the original one. But I must say I like the original one more already because here I have all the different modes listed with colors. So it's, I, I don't know, I just like that. So I don't think it's not, it's not, it's not. But yeah, you have a bunch of information here. So you are, yeah, it's more or less like here it is figure it out for yourself i gotta say it's a lot more slick in size but you still have more keys i think they have reduced it to just being one control button and you use it in combination so probably hold that one and do stuff and yes hold shift to access <laughs> weighs a bit more than the original one which is also pretty nice when it comes in this more slick format we have one more knob also and now all the connectivity is on the back on the old one we just had two midi in and out i prefer these midi contacts but that that's just that's all about preference we also have midi over usb i'm gonna assume an sd card for like saving stuff and, and usb out so i'm not sure if it's kind of like the organelle then that you can actually plug in stuff straight into it and like code and stuff on it which is in that case really cool but yeah it's very nice uh this is really nice also i think this actually is three like this part is 3d printed this is not but i like this a bit more than i like the wood actually and especially that it's closed with the screw so it doesn't break off like on old toy you know the clicky clicky or like on a remote control Ugh, so much duct tape on remote controls way nicer than the open back because <laughs> that thing happens all of the time well three aa batteries very nice and then we simply power it on I guess. Oh. Took a while to power on. And max volume. Can I latch it? Latch is the anchor. Okay. Huh. I gotta engage latch mode and then put down keys. That's a bit annoying compared to how you latch on the original pocket piano actually. Where you simply hold down three keys and then you can latch them. However, now I can switch whichever keys are latched. But yeah, what I wanted to compare there was the speaker, and this one is not as loud, but thankfully it's got an output jack, so ho 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 ho. But I personally really enjoy things with speakers. I think it's because I'm so used to circuit bending toys and stuff like that, so I just enjoy being able to, to try stuff without having to plug in stuff, but yeah, that's just me. So these three LEDs are most likely just all of the different functions. And sadly now on the camera, they all look kind of white. These are new, now purple and red quickly on the back. Here's all the different patterns and here are all the different like synth modes and stuff. So you switch, nice, that's that LED. And then here, it's gonna switch, I wonder. That one sounds when you switch. Sadly, you cannot seemingly switch stuff when you are latched. So, you have to pick what you're doing before you latch a thing. Hopefully someone can fix that. But that means we have one, two, three, four, five, six different patterns and we have one two three four five six different voices to pick from and then we have the four knobs so this one probably being speed yes because it's got a clock on it this one i would assume is envelope because then they are just the same as on the septa box and the original pocket piano those two knobs are speed or tempo and envelope i think they talked about a surprise knob so i'm guessing the little gift is a surprise knob this one yeah, 
being how you actually fade between different voices or tones which in, within the mode that you have picked here. So now being in the first mode, we have a bunch of synth tones. But if we go to the second, oh, I could actually switch that. So I cannot switch the pattern, but I can switch the synth. Oh, this one being filter on this one. Ooh, okay, this one being filter on drums. So it's like a little groove box. Very analog sound. That's really fun. <laughs> oh yeah, we can move on. I don't know, we're on blue now. We go green. Very voicey. <laughs> oh, ooh. So only like the first mode is basically the original pocket piano receptor box. And now you have all these other different modes. <laughs> so that's really cool. Well done, well done. And uh, I'm assuming here is also where we can go down in octaves, which we couldn't latch or like do while we are latched. I wonder how many key. Okay. I think we have all key polyphony. <laughs> so that's nice. Also, ooh. Yeah, so far I must say I am mighty impressed because it's really straightforward. The plug and play point is 10 out of 10 with this one as well. But then we have this record function also. I wonder what. Okay, we have a metronome. The next. But yeah. Okay, so I can enter a record mode, I guess. Oh. oh, so I stopped recording when I hit it again. Good to know. And will this now... Yeah, so... That's really cool, because I can create this little sequence going of recording, and then I assume I can save it and switch back and forth between different. I don't think I can multi-track record, so to speak, but I, I'm not entirely sure. Ooh, it's like a circuit bend. <laughs> but yeah, based on how fun it is with the drums, what they have done here, as far as grooves and stuff going with it, um, now I really kind of wish that I could have that going, switch to a different voice and play over it. So Critter and Guitari, if you're watching this and that's not possible, it might be, probably not, but uh, please send me a new one. <laughs> one more? Why not? Because since I can sync it with MIDI, and that is probably as easy as it's always been, as far as a MIDI clock goes, that means that it's gonna be perfect. I can just play these little sequenced loops of stuff with these patterns also. And while it's green, I can actually switch. So it's only latched, which I guess kind of makes sense. Fun samples for the drums. <laughs> Would have been nice if I could go up and down in octaves when it's recorded. Oh yeah, we haven't... Uh, Checked out the, the package yet. The secret surprise, what do they call it? They call it a surprise, even. Haha, -ha, very nice. Surprise me. So 
some sort of slidey. Drums are really interesting with the surprise. That's cool. Something I didn't comment on is the shininess. So it's got this matte finish, like a chrome silver matte finish that looks very high end actually in what they have done here. But I personally would actually have preferred if they would have made some fun colors because they have worked with silver before. So it would have been really fun with uh, a new color option like purple or something like that, perhaps in this matte coding which i think is really really cool um same as on the i mean on the bolsa base and the kaleido loop this one definitely has that metallic feel like the original pocket piano has so i understand that they're keeping it original uh, but that would have just been a really fun option with a new color so you gotta catch them all, so to speak. And I must say that I really like that you, I mean, you inevitably kind of hand to mark everything out here. So it's really cool that you've done the same for the pots. Not because I've ever missed it on the original Pocket Piano and the Septavox, but it's still, it's, it's a nice development to see or whatever. <laughs> Now I wish I could latch it while I'm holding a thing. I just want that added feature, maybe because I'm so used to it on the original Pocket Piano. As always, it's a pleasure <laughs> with Critter and Guitar Gear. Like, I think that if you're into it, you're just into it. And I am personally simply really, really into it. I truly appreciate how smart they are in making everything figure outable, very logical and simple for me to just start it up, plug the cable in, I don't even necessarily have to, and start playing around and figuring everything out. So there might be things that I haven't figured out and uh, that's cool in that case, but I feel like I probably have covered most things. Like what I haven't done is saved a thing and such, but what's the point? I'm just gonna, try to delete it. Anyways, I think this is gonna be it for this video. Here were some sounds and opinions and a look at this because this is just something that is gonna show up so much on this channel. So I felt that I should probably make this type of video to have sort of shown you what is the thing I'm playing around with so much because I still to this day get a lot of questions in regard to this one. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you thought it was kind of fun and yeah, you're just gonna see me make music, demos, and all kinds of stuff with the brand new Pocket Piano 201. So to give it a rating, I would say that there are a couple of things that I would like to change with it in regards to the latching and stuff like that, but those are minor nitpicks. Uh, and also, to, which is so smart, probably something that is fixable, so to speak. So, or what it is, it's a 9 out of 10, uh, but my expectations were the right expectations when going into it. So if it would have ticked off all the boxes for me personally, it would straight up have been a 10 out of 10. And it's probably a 9.5 out of 10 based on the fact that I can most likely get this fixed. 
so that I can play it the way I want to play it. But yeah, just great job, Criterion Guitari. Thank you very much. I mean, you should fa I bought it, so thank me. Also, we can sh thank each other. Thank us for the music. The sounds we're singing.